Welcome to Flying Like the Pros is tips and tricks from professional pilots and instructors. So let's get going. Here we go. So the first thing you need to know is, look, even the pros have their moments. 7852, what speed are you at? Uh, we're at 220. 220? What do you need? Well, uh, no, 212, I'll tell you what. You go to 180, turn right heading 060, and I'll run the guy behind you that's doing about 100 knots faster on the ground speed. All right, you want to play games? No, I'm not playing a game. You're doing 180 across the ground. The guy that's five behind you is doing 310 across the ground. Now, you tell me, if I've got a bunch of airplanes in there, what would you do? Get a sign of speed, sir. Hey, sir, I can give you a number to call. I'm not playing games with you. I'm trying to run traffic effectively and uh, smoothly into the Kennedy Airport. What do you need, sir? At least 230. All right, Jeff Blue 852. Blue 852, proceed direct to Zulab. We're direct to Zulab, 852. And uh, JetBlue 852, not for nothing, but your assigned speed coming in over Cameron is 250 knots. Or if you come in over Lendy, it's 250 knots. And unless somebody slows you, until you get an approach clearance, we wouldn't... So, people often ask us, how did this pilot get into trouble? Would you like to hear... All right, you want to play games? Sure, I'm not playing a game. So, Peter, what's your take on that? Well, I tell you, Jeff, I don't think you're going to find would you like to play games in the pilot controller glossary. Basically, you know, he kind of went off script a little bit. He uh, certainly pushed the controller's buttons in a what must have been a high-stress situation, and everything unraveled from there, and you had an argument over the air, which you really just don't want to see. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. So, everybody, let's introduce ourselves. I'm Jeffrey Robert Moss. A lot of people know me as Mossy. I'm the 2010 National Fight Instructor of the Year and a Master CFI. And one of the key things I want you to know is that one of my first ever aviation experiences was flying a Boeing 747-400 simulator. And for me, that started a lifelong love affair with airline procedures and how those could be adapted to general aviation. You know, I came at this a more traditional path, Jeff. I learned to fly from a young CFI who was trying to build time and become a commercial pilot. And uh, it wasn't until after I got my instrument rating and I flew with a number of different instructors that I learned how to apply professional techniques to my own general aviation flying. But I, having learned that, I've really come to love it. Absolutely. So first off, we want to thank Jeppesen for letting us use their charts during the presentation. And I think one of the things we want to start off with is, look, pro tips for GA pilots. Listen to this general aviation pilot and watch how he handled this situation. Five, Mike. Charlie, you're five miles from uh, Z2, turn right heading of 330. Uh, three, Maintain of 2,500 till established on the localizer. Clear to Alex from like 35 right approach and uh, can best forward speed to, uh, to Z2. Zero to establish uh, 2.5 uh, forward speed. Talk for Mike And 3.30 on the heading. Okay, 3.30 on the heading, thank you. Cherokee 5, Mike, Charlie, contact tower 121.0. Talk to you later. And uh, tower 5, 4, Mike, Charlie, we're having engine problems up here. Uh, you got approach, uh, Cherokee 5, Mike, Charlie, say again. Yes, sir, uh, 5, 4, Mike, Charlie, we have uh, engine problems up here. We still have power, but I'm going to go ahead and declare emergency. You'd like to go ahead and come in. Uh, Cherokee 5, Mike, Charlie, okay. Uh, we'll show you as an emergency and uh, continue on your approach for runway 35 right. Um, anything else uh, we need to tell? I mean, we're calling the tower right now. Yes, sir. Uh, 5, 4, Mike, Charlie, we're not going to be able to make the field at this time. Uh, I need to go ahead and go down. Cherokee 5, Mike, 5, 4, Mike, Charlie, you're not going to be able to win? Yeah, I don't think we're going to make the field this time. Hey, and approach, I'd just let you know, 5, 4, Mike, Charlie, uh, I'm going to fly just over the access road over uh, I-135 uh, here. If I can't make the runway, I'm just going to put it down there. Uh, Cherokee 5, Mike, 5 4 Mike, Charlie, roger that. We're alerting authorities. You're going to try to get on one of the front roads for uh, the tollway. Yeah, that's a firm, and it looks like I'm going to have to do that. 5 4 Mike, Charlie, roger. Uh, current winds at Austin are 0 6 0 9 and now 10 minutes 2 9 9 7. Okay, uh, thank you very much, 5 4 Mike, Charlie. 5 4 Mike, Charlie, if you can transmit uh, your status once you do make it on the uh, ground, please, we'll have people monitor. Yeah, 5 4 Mike, Charlie, we're going to take the field next to uh, the road here. Okay, approach 5 4 Mike Charlie on the ground, everybody's okay. 5 4 Mike Charlie, uh, thank you, sir, and uh, we're alert loading um, the authorities. Okay, thank you very much, 5 4 Mike Charlie. Well, Peter, you got to love this guy. I mean, this guy was a total pro. How do you think this guy handled this? I thought he handled it great. You know, he had an emergency, clearly. 
He had a plan. He followed his training. He made a decision. He stuck to his decision. And he communicated what was going on. And he had a successful outcome. I think he did a fantastic job. Yeah, if I saw this pilot in front of me, I'd probably kiss his feet. The guy was a total pro. So here's what we're here to talk about tonight, the tips and tricks that the pros use. We're going to take a look at communications, mastering automation, SRM callouts, that single pilot resource management callouts, procedures, and emergencies. So let's jump into it, starting with communications. Just another day in Oakland Center. Take a listen to this guy. Oakland Center, Bonanza, 424 Delta Kilo. Now, how many people out there really think that this guy got fight following? Do you, would you like to know? Well, let's find out. Aircraft calling for flight following unable at this time. Well, there you have it, right? I mean, can you believe this guy? He tells the controller he's on his way to Bakersfield to visit his cousin. Like, the controller really cares. I mean, come on. So what we're looking at is the pro tip about flight following. And first off, let's start off with flight following from the center. So here's an example of the best way to get flight following from the center. Oakland Center, Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo is just off Paso Robles. Can I get a beacon code, please? And again, the call sign is Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo. Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo, Oakland Center, Squawk 6244. Squawk 6244, we're a COL4 slant golf. The destination is Bakersfield, Bravo Foxtrot Lima at 9,500. Thanks. The key thing here, folks, is when they come back and say Squawk 6244, that's where you come back and say you Squawk 6244, we're a COL4 slant golf. And when you check in with them, Oakland Center, Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo, just off Paso Robles. The key thing there you want to say is, can I get a beacon code? It kind of implies to the controller that you know how the system works. And one of the really cool things this whole format does is by carefully wording the request in a format that works into the controller's workflow, it simply implies to the controller you know what you're doing. Kind of really cool. Now let's take a look at getting flight following from a Tracon. SoCal Approach, Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo, request. Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo, go ahead. Corvallis 424, Charlie Romeo is just off El Monte. Request fight following with a center handoff. Two Paso Robles, Papa Romeo Bravo. Requested altitude is 8,500, and the aircraft type is a COL4 slant golf. Key thing here, folks, is... When you say, request flight following with a center handoff. I also hear professional pilots many times call up and say, request flight following with a center handoff and a class Bravo climb. Because that gets it all out in one shot to the controller. Hey, not only do I want the center handoff, but I want to be cleared into the class Bravo so I can get my VFR climb going. Now here's what the controller will typically come back with. Corvallis 4, Charlie Romeo, stand by for the beacon code. Now, that's actually a good thing. What happens there is the controller at the Tracon, remember the local approach controller, hits a button on their keyboard. That sends a command out via telephone line to the center computer requesting a center code. And that process typically takes about 30 seconds to a minute. And then the code will come back, and when the code comes back, you typically get the controller to say this to you. Corvallis 4, Charlie Romeo, Squawk 6244, say altitude. Squawk 6244, the altitude is 3,500, climbing 8,500, thanks. And again, by carefully wording the request in a format that works into the controller's workflow, it simply implies that you know what you're doing. Pretty cool, eh? Corvallis 4, Charlie Romeo, radar contact, 5 northwest of El Monte, maintain VFR. Maintain VFR. 